choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. What's up, everybody? Just a guy having fun here. Wanted to make a video, kind of not normal what I do on this channel, but uh, I want to talk about just doing the thing. So uh, I'm out working today, so forgive me if I'm looking that way, but that's what I got to really be paying attention to. So, but I got some things I wanted to talk about, and I wanted to make a, a little short video on it, on uh, just doing it, man. Get it done. So I'm sitting in my truck right now. Uh, working and that's after the engine blew on it uh, long story uh, engine went out on it and dealer quoted me twelve thousand dollars for a new engine and I'm all about screwing the man anytime I can and uh, maybe I learned something in the process but uh, if I could save a few dollars and put that in my pocket that's what I want to do so I did some research I've never uh, really taking on anything this big uh, mechanically you know I change my brakes do my oil um, some light duty stuff uh, but uh, you know I did change an engine in a 1979 Honda Accord that I bought for $400 and got to make payments on from a neighbor uh, when I was about uh, 18 and my dad bought me a Haynes manual and uh, said there's the garage got any questions let me know never done anything like that before but uh he did most of the work and uh but i learned a lot like just doing the thing right so fast forward 30 years and engine blows in my truck and i'm freaking out i don't have twelve thousand dollars um what are we gonna do did a little research found a, a reputable uh engine builder uh bought a uh remanufactured crate motor uh, just stock motor, not doing anything fancy, uh, for four thousand dollars, not twelve, and decided that it's nothing more than nuts and bolts and wires, right? So let's do the thing, and uh, budget about another thousand for miscellaneous parts and stuff, and I got it done, and uh, now I'm sitting in my truck, and uh, I put the engine in myself, saved about seven thousand dollars. Um, but it came about from just doing the thing, man. Just biting the bullet, making an effort, not being intimidated, and going after it, right? Um, these modern cars aren't like the old cars. You old guys, uh, like me, man, used to be three wires. You got spark, uh, spark fuel and air. Good to go, man. Let's get that puppy on the road. It's not like that anymore. Computers just fuck everything up. But uh, it got me thinking, um, you know little something uh, in my man card uh, slot and doing the engine and I was thinking about other things where I just did the thing right whatever it was I just went after it because it's it was important to me and uh, so I made a little list and uh, 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 things that, that I've done uh, just as a result of doing the thing right like putting an engine in my truck because I didn't have twelve thousand dollars what are you gonna do so you do the thing. You do what needs to be done. Um, so, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know growing up all I ever wanted to be was a cop. Thank God that didn't happen. Or a Marine. And uh, it's because of this big dent on my head. I had a car accident and seatbelt didn't work, blah, blah, blah. I couldn't get the medical release to do either one. It was the 80s, affirmative action, white guy. <laughs> Good luck. Anyway, uh, so I had to find a way to either chase bad guys or serve my country. Uh, so I became a PI. Who does that? So I put myself through a little PI school. Uh, met one of the best surveillance guys uh, ever. Uh, former DEA guy. But uh, that guy on surveillance was, wow, amazing. And uh, he brought me in. Almost fired me the first day. <laughs> I almost got fired the first day as a surveillance. Um, but uh, anyway, um, I stuck it out, right? Uh, wanted to be good at it and because it was a passion bad guys and country that's what I'm about and uh, 
So, you know, that led to a pretty successful career. I had my own company for a while till uh, the economy crashed in 2008 and defense budgets got cut. And uh, that really impacted me because I'd moved on to running a very uh, successful uh, company contracting for the government, training uh, our military, very special military and alphabet folks uh, to go downrange to do good things in bad places. And, uh, you know, I help train guys to kill terrorists. Um, and that's kind of cool. Why? Because I did the thing, right? And I'm just a private investigator. I don't have a college degree. I'm just a guy. It's on my YouTube channel, right? I'm just a guy having fun. You know what? That's what life's about. Let's have a little fun while we're living this, whatever it is we're going after in this life. So you go after it and as a result of going after it, just become a PI and training guys to be, uh, serve my country because I couldn't serve my country through other ways, you know, going through the military and stuff. Uh, I found another way to do it. I just did the thing. And I know at one point, because I ended up developing one of the largest groups on LinkedIn, uh, dedicated to military and intelligence folks. And, uh, that's still going on today. I am not part of that anymore. Um, I've passed that on uh, to good guy. And, um, but I did business uh, with a guy everybody knows who was in the news. And uh, I was a co-speaker with Lieutenant General Michael Flynn at an event, right? And uh, I know for a fact that my name had gone across a certain president's desk uh, as a result of some of my endeavors to serve my country and uh, make this world a little bit better place. But I mean, who does that, right? So another example outside of you know my professional career is I got a law changed, right? My son was threatened to be shot and killed if you've been following my channel uh, for a while. Um, you know that in Arizona, it used to be uh, teachers, school administrators, and faculty uh, were not mandatory reporters of threats or incidents of serious violence or death in the schools. They didn't have to tell anybody, and that was wrong. So I got I got that law changed. Uh, Arizona Revised Statute uh, fifteen five twelve and Arizona Revised Statute uh, fifteen three forty one. Go check it out. Get it done in your state. Just do the thing, right? That law needed to be changed. So I just did the thing. I made it happen. So what is that leading me all to? Just do the thing, right? I need your help. Let's all do the thing. Um, constitutional police reform. Uh, if you've been following my channel again, you heard me talk about that. That's not dead. But see this uh, little pesky thing called politics and elections kind of got in the way. And uh, nobody has time to get any real business done for the people. So we had to put that on the shelf for a little while. And we're going to be going back after that. So you're going to be seeing me uh, promoting that a little bit more, my a lot more on my channel, uh, the constitutional police reform. And I'm going to be asking everybody to reach out to their legislature in here in Arizona. Uh, let's get it started here. Uh, that constitutional police reform is right for the pick. And so what is constitutional police reform? It's uh, mandatory training in the academy and then ongoing throughout their career. Uh, constitutional training, a fundamental understanding of that document what their job is, the, the, the very thing they swear an oath to, right? So we want that. Then we want um, to make it illegal for uh, police uh, to lie to you about your constitutional rights. Lie to me about anything else. Tell me you got 47 witnesses uh, to say I killed JFK, I don't care. You can lie to me about that, but you can't lie to me and tell me I have to answer your questions like you did my 17 year old son. So that can't happen in my, in this citizen's opinion. I think I got a lot of people agree with me. And then finally, let's make it mandatory for complaint forms uh, to be in the lobby and compliment forms, but complaint forms, compliment forms and four year request forms to be in the lobby of every police station in the state of Arizona. So I'm gonna do the thing and I hope you help me do the thing, uh, which is constitutional police reform. Uh, putting this energy in my truck, wow, really made me realize, uh, just gotta do the thing. 
So let's go do the thing on constitutional police reform. And uh, we'll get that done. And uh, hey, I want to leave you with this. So my dad and I are the ones that put in the engine. My dad is 83 years old. 83 years old. He put in uh, freaking 12 hour days, you know, four or five, 12 hour days straight. Helped me put in the engine, being underneath it, doing bolts, doing nuts, and the whole thing. Electrical is my issue. He didn't want to play with it because he's old school and I get it. Uh, but pop, love you, buddy. And uh, here's what I took away from you. Object in motion keeps in motion, brother. 83, what a human. <laughs> so all right everybody i'm gonna leave you with that um thanks for watching thanks for hanging out with me uh go spend some time with your family do the important things do the thing right do the things be good humans don't be a dick i was made in the usa in the land of the what home of the what it really don't feel like that these days y'all following sheep i follow my gut i will not comply with these mandates y'all do what they say i do what i want better step up before it's too late you know where to find me i'm up in the front what you turn on the news is useless i feel like i'm about to lose it i know the biden that it clueless but they know what the hell they doing i'll never come